I'm Matthew Kahn, and I'm the author of a new book that will be published in April 2022 called Going Remote. How the flexible work economy can improve our lives and our cities. In this brief video, I'd like to tell you a little bit about my book. I'm an economist. I'm the provost professor of economics at the University of Southern California, and I've done a lot of writing on urban and environmental issues. This book is not a book set in the present. It's set a few years from now, maybe three years from now, in an economy where the pandemic is behind us, but work from home is here to stay. So my starting point of the book is that there's been an enormous silver lining of the COVID shock. As horrible as the COVID shock has been, and it will continue to linger, a silver lining of this horrible experience time has been our experience with how much those of us who are lucky enough to work in jobs that are work from home friendly, how much we have gained from the opportunity to work from home. And what my book is about is about the new economic geography of how people, firms, and locations will be affected by the persistence of work from home. So go back to 2019, and the US economy featured a geography of these superstar places, Boston, New York, San Francisco, Seattle, these tech hubs. There was tremendous opportunity for those with the skills and training to be in the tech sector. But at the same time, housing was sky high expensive in these cities. And many middle-class people that had long commutes and didn't have that much free time. What my book is about, is the new geography of opportunity when we can unbundle where we work from where we live. I start the book talking about, for those who are privileged enough, and it tends to be educated people and in certain industries and occupations, you can't be a dentist who works from home. You can't be a car mechanic who works from home. You can be a professor, you can be a lawyer and work from home at some times. For those who either will work from home full-time or will have the opportunity to work from home on a part-time basis. Their commuting changes and they commute less and they have more free time. And I talk about in the, an early chapter of the book, how our quality of life is affected when we're commuting less and time for family, time for chores, time for our hobbies, and the opportunity when you have this windfall of time to attend children's events, to, to tend to a sick mother, of just all sorts of contingencies in life where we benefit from unbundling where we work from where we live. As we think about our lives and as we integrate into our life plans that we have this opportunity to work from home, people will now live in different locations than they would have in our pre-work from home economy. For those who love to ski, perhaps set up their lives near a skiing range for those who love to jog, for those who have a mother in Missouri, for those who have cultural roots in Baltimore, many different ways to configure your life. Firms, we see with Amazon as it has opened up HQ2s, we're gonna see firms who seek to hire more diverse workers and keep them engaged in the workplace, locating smaller campuses in areas where people want to live. The key resource for any for-profit firm is the workforce and a happy productive workforce will be productive and won't quit. Firms that have happy productive workers will, the profit motive will lead them to pursue spreading out to move where workers want to live. And so in this sense, the geography of economic opportunity will shift because of work from home as our diverse workforce moves to those areas which meet their conception of the good life, where they have a mother, where they have their roots. An example, I talk in the book that African-Americans are underrepresented in working in tech. And I offer the theory that may be false, that tech cities have been like Seattle, Portland, San Francisco. These have not been traditional African-American cities. Baltimore, Detroit, Cleveland, alternatively, are cities with large African-American populations. If one is, a, a, going forward, African-Americans who want to work in tech can live in a city like Baltimore and commute a couple of days a month 
to a headquarters like Amazon HQ2 in Virginia. And so this quality of face-to-face interaction, substituting for the quantity of face-to-face interaction, will allow firms to attract a more diverse workforce and will improve quality of life. My editors have pushed me on a point. Is work from home elitist? It is true that college-educated people are more likely to be eligible for such jobs. I argue in the book that with the new geography of work from home, those areas that attract work from home workers, there'll be enough purchasing power in those areas that this will create service jobs for people. So if I, so whether it's being a bartender, whether it's being working as a, as a dentist, in those areas where work from home workers cluster, there's gonna be service demand. And if I have a taste for the amenities of the area, my life improves because these work from home workers have located there. My book has all sorts of interesting arguments of as we move and locate in new places, how this increases our freedom. An example, if work from home workers cluster in some current pseudo farmland in upper New York state, their children will need a school district to attend. Because there aren't urban public sector union rules already in that place, that school district is free to choose its rules for how it educates its children. Perhaps there will be Khan Academy videos. Perhaps there'll be experimentation with new curriculum. This experimentation with new ideas, which comes about because new communities form, allows us to learn what works in educating young people. It's my opinion that we haven't experimented enough with different ways to police, different ways to educate, and different ways to adapt to climate change. As we try different strategies in the new communities that form, the good ideas, this sort of pilot effect, this guinea pig effect, this will reveal new knowledge, and these ideas can be tried anywhere. So in the final section of my book, I talk about Harrison Ford for Han Solo from Star Wars. When I was young, I'd read about him living in Los Angeles and also living in the Bozeman, Montana or Jackson Hole and jetting around. In our new work from home economy where we can work from anywhere, each of us has our own conception of the good life. And we're on this planet for a finite number of days. This ability to be where we wanna be, to be where we need to be when we have responsibilities, to not be tied down to the office, like in that uh, TV show, The Office. You can go to the office if you want to. Young people will want to go to the office. Middle-aged mentors will want to mentor them. But so many of us want more permutations and serendipity in our life. We're more likely to get more from our life when we can enjoy the full variety of what's out there rather than being pinned down. So my book is a celebration of the new possibilities for all of us brought about by remote work. And there's always a next generation. My grandfather didn't go to college while his son, my father, did. While there certainly are people who aren't eligible for work from home now, with the new opportunities posed by work from home, children will have an increased incentive to pursue education so that they can be eligible. A final point of my book, I argue optimistically that the rise of work from home will close the gender gap between men and women. Men on average continue to earn more than women, and some women opt out in their 30s to have children and to spend time with them. The rise of work from home opens up new possibilities for part-time work for women, such that when their children are very young, and if they're caring for these kids, they can both work and care for these kids. At the same time, the firms who allow the young parents to work from home have incentives to continue to mentor these people because these people, both men and women, will eventually rejoin the firm. And so there'll be more continuity of careers because of the rise of work from home. And so this continuity across space and time is an important theme of my book. As an economist, my book is not a book about science fiction. It's a book about how our economy is adapting post-COVID to the new opportunities brought about by work from home. And we only have fully discovered these because of the horror of the COVID shock. And so my book is a celebration of the silver lining of this shock and the new economic geography it will allow for.